This is gonna get good, 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 good. Baby, how you feeling? The exclusive interview, Robin Roberts, Michelle Obama. I struggled like a lot of people to find a sense of hope in all of this. The survival lessons she learned during the pandemic, now passing them on in a new book, The Light We Carry. When we're feeling stressed, we just do more. Let's have some kids, let's fix the world. No, 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 be quiet, <laughs> be still. From Fun Talk. I have a hat, Robin. The world is broken, but I made a hat. Michelle Obama's knitting? You did all of this. Yes, Robin, I did. To Tough Talk. It has taken 58 years of practice to silence those voices. A give and take conversation like no other. You write that you had low grade depression. Mm -hmm. And from the comforts of home to the camaraderie of the kitchen table with her cabinet of friends, including this rare appearance from her mom. Sit down, little lady at the kitchen table. Hey, scooch in. The biggest surprises about the former first lady. Sometimes there are things about your husband or your partner that you don't want to say to them. You reach. <laughs> Facing fear and finding the light within. How do you shelter your flame without hiding the light? Michelle Obama, The Light We Carry, a conversation with Robin Roberts. I do my hair toss, check my nails, baby, how you feeling? Hair toss, check my nails, baby, how you feeling? This is the Michelle Obama we know, or think we know. Confident, accomplished, self-assured. We're about to shoot the cover of my next book. I'm so excited. And this is Michelle Obama. I've lived with my fearful mind for 58 years now. She hates how I look all the time and no matter what. Every day she tries to tell me that I don't know what I'm doing. She won't go away. She is every monster I've ever known. And she is also me. It's a different side of the former first lady. One she is sharing, she says, in the hope she can help others cope in difficult times. It's part of our conversation, which began at the Obama's home in Chicago. Well, hey there, welcome to my house. <laughs> it's good to be back Fancy in your house. Fancy meeting you here. How are Looking you? Looking forward to our conversation. Oh, so glad to have you here. Uh, oh, so you had to wear the heels. I thought. No. This is where the Obamas lived before the whirlwind of the White House transformed their lives. Let's see, four years ago, yeah. We were here. We were here. 2018, Man. about to launch Becoming, which went on to become one of the best selling books of all time. Go 17 figure. million copies. That's a lot of books. And now the new book. Yes. Michelle says her new book stems from her experience after the Becoming book tour. A 35 city extravaganza. Arena sized crowds, a lot of love and hugs and togetherness and energy and then a few months later we were quarantined and isolated and like a lot of people i was sitting at home trying to make sense of what was happening to our country to our world the rising death tolls tonight the number of cases of coronavirus spiking here in the u.s the division and insurrection <laughs> And like a lot of people, I was trying to figure out how do we get in this mess and how do we get out of it? People, for whatever reason, looking to me for an answer. You know, I think that when there's a vacuum of leadership, people look to who they think can help them make sense of it all. And I was trying to figure out what do I rely on when I, Michelle Obama, am struggling to find hope. So this book is kind of my offering and, you know, sharing what I know, what I use. It's called The Light We Carry, Overcoming in Uncertain Times, offering a glimpse into what she calls her personal toolbox, the habits and practices, attitudes and beliefs that help her move forward during tough times, like during the COVID lockdown. You write that you had low-grade depression. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How did that present itself? It was that loss of hope, you know, thinking about, did all of this matter? All the sacrifice that 
my family, my husband and I, all that we had done, especially after the, the, the election, did it matter? And does anything matter? And I think that if you, you don't have the tools to get out of it, you can just spiral and spiral down, further down. How'd you get out of that? A hobby I took up. <laughs> you know, and I won't say that this was the sole way, but it was one of the new tools I developed over quarantine. I, I picked up knitting, got a book and some YouTube videos, and I started stitching. Knit, pearl, knit, pearl, knit, knit, pearl, pearl, garter stitch, and <laughs> I felt my mind quieting. When I felt uncertain, being able to finish a hat, Robin, <laughs> I mean, it, it became like, a hat, I have a hat. The world is broken, but I made a hat. And I felt so good about it because it was a, it was a thing, it was concrete, and it was something I did. A small tool that she says helps settle her anxious mind, which brings us back to that quote about the so-called fearful mind she says she lived with for 58 years. You write, every day I try to talk back to her, talking about yourself, mm -hmm. or at least override her with more positive thoughts, but still, mm -hmm. she won't go away. Now this is coming from someone who has not one but two Ivy League degrees, <laughs> was first lady for eight years, you felt that way. It is every day practice to silence the no in your own head, the thing that is telling you don't try that new thing. I too have had to learn to wrestle that fearful mind down. And being fearful of change. Exactly. Because exactly. you could have changed the course of history. Yes. When your husband decided to run for president, mm -hmm. he came to you and said, I won't do it unless you're in. Yeah. And you could have said no. Yeah, wasn't that a a hard thing he put on my lap. <laughs> and you contemplated, you thought about it. Oh, I would, it, it was no. My fearful mindset, <laughs> oh no, he must be crazy. It's strange to think that I could have altered the course of history with my fear, but I didn't. I said yes. What did you learn about yourself well, that you discovered about yourself by, by walking through that fear. By the time my husband approached me with this big question, I had practiced moving myself out of my comfort zone. You know, even starting with my mother making me walk to school by myself in kindergarten. I left my city to go to an Ivy League school. All of it was uncomfortable. All of it, had I looked and listened to my fearful mind, I would have said, no, I'm just going to stay put. This is safe. So when Barack came to me, the rational me said, we can do this. We know how to do hard things. We've done it before. We could afford to take the risk. And what story would I tell my kids? That their father had the chance to do great things and to help a lot of people. But I, as their mother, said no. Why? because I didn't want change. I had to quiet my fearful mind, that monster in me <laughs> that we all have that can keep us stuck. One of my sayings is, don't let fear keep you from your destiny. There you go. And I want young kids to understand that. There is hope on the other side of fear. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.